Horrific Network Entertainment. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Horrific Podcast. Man, what a week we have ahead of us as far as podcasts on this channel. You guys are going to get the second evolution of HHN show this week. You're going to get a writing with Horrific show this week. Maybe a tribute show as well. And... um yeah, I think that this week as well, you are going to also be seeing, um, probably actually early next week, the return of the screening room as I am going to go see The Cursed with at least the Higbees, maybe even um, some Fast Pass with Us crew, but I'm also going to go see Studio 666 and Uncharted. Uh, It's a bachelor weekend for me, so I am taking advantage of all of that before we do another special screening room as we got premiere access to the Batman on the 1st of March, so we are very close to that as well. I, yeah, I'm super excited, super stoked for all of it, and cannot really wait for the opportunity to get back into the movie theater again here with some cool movies coming out um, relatively soon. Um, Horror movie news. I don't have a lot of horror movie news this week for you guys other than the fact that we are getting all these major releases coming to the theater. It seems like uh, a lot of horror movies are coming out throughout summer. We did get a trailer over the course of the of, uh, you know, Super Bowl in the week after from um, uh, Jurassic Park Dominion. That looked really cool. I thought that that was uh, a very you know epic looking conclusion to the Chris Pratt, Bryce Dallas Howard, of course bringing back Sam Neill, Laura Dern, and. Um, Jeff Goldblum as Malcolm, Grant, and Ellie to kind of complete that whole story. Curious to see where they go as far as how long the the three of them are going to be with Pratt um, and Bryce Dallas if they cross paths kind of briefly or if they are there the majority of the film. These reunion movies are somewhat interesting. Halloween 2018 Everybody knows, if you listen to our show, how I kind of felt about that one. And then um, we also have uh, the Scream reunion, which was very well done. You know, without question, my favorite horror film of this year, if not my favorite film of the year so far. So with that, I think... They did a really good job reuniting the two casts, New and Legacy. So I would say, you know, Halloween Kills was meh. This was really well done. The Chucky show was really well done. So it's kind of hit and miss with these Legacy and new cast member, you know, crossovers. And this trailer looks absolutely spectacular so i have a very very high expectations but i am you know tempering those expectations just kind of based on past experiences of being let down with like halloween or matrix so yeah but speaking of crazy animal movies a really cool shark attack you know kind of movie that was a nice blend between practical and digital effects really boiled down uh, to this movie called The Requin and the cinematographer Matt S. Bell 
is our guest on today's show. He uh, is actually just a cinematographer who lives out of an RV and he travels from filming location to filming location, which is pretty, pretty dope. Um, I actually enjoy, or enjoyed, I should say, talking to Matt quite a bit. And uh, I think that uh, he will be a cool interview to be able to talk to again um, in the coming weeks and months and being able to just kind of track his progress and stay in contact with him and uh, yeah see what he has in store for everybody in the future so the uh, biggest thing that I would say is uh the Requin is available on VOD right now. You can check this film out, and it is very, uh, very thrilling, very you know intense as far as the uh, the suspense of this film and the anticipation of if Alicia Silverstone's character is going to make it, and it is shot very well. So I hope you enjoy this interview with Matt. All right, guys, joining me on the podcast or the video cast, if you're watching or listening, however you're coming to us, uh, is a cinematographer from a really cool film starring Alicia Silverstone. Uh, I know the listeners of our show know that name and will appreciate that name. Uh, the Requelm, or the Requelm, Matt, say the name, please. <laughs> the, Requ- <laughs> the Requen. <laughs> the Requen. Yeah. Um is a really fun uh, hypertension out at sea um, lose all hope kind of a horror movie uh, kind of very like uh, 47 meters down type of a feeling to it and uh, as all these films that come out that involve shark attacks uh, whether they be practical or cgi it always seems like there's some cool stories attached to filming anything that predominantly takes place on water so I'm excited to talk to you, man. How was uh, making this thing, both with those in mind, that obviously there's some kind of digital effects going on, ver- and uh, what your take on that with dealing with the fact that it was water. Um, I know all horror movie fans by now have heard the disastrous tales of Steven Spielberg ba- battling Bruce the animatronic. So what was this like, man, to be to be shooting out in uh, – on water, and I know in your film all your filmography, you have uh, some other shark uh, centric films to your name too that you've been a part of the crew on. So, what was this thing like, man? And thank you for coming on. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. It's uh, I love doing uh, this type of things. So I'm you know, pleasure. It's pleasure to be here for sure. Uh, the requirement it was it was a it was a t- it was a tough shoot you know uh, anytime anytime you're out on water um, uh, things get exponentially tougher and uh, for this particular film it would have been nice to be on a hydraulic set on dry land in a stage where we can control everything and uh, you know of course that's what we all wanted but um, but uh, there are always budgetary restraints and uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't go as far as to say we went through as many troubles as Steven Spielberg did on Jaws. <laughs> But, uh, you know, from the horror stories that I've heard. Um, but, you know, we had some we had similar issues. Um, we 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 too had a, a life size. Uh, I, I believe it was to scale of a 14 or 15 foot uh, great white shark. We had a uh, animatronic uh, uh, mechanical build uh, that was, you know, with wires and levers and, and foot pedals and, and uh, you know, a bunch of sheer strength. Uh, you can move this thing around and make it uh, kind of chomp at the air. And, um, uh, you know, that's, that's one of the, uh, one of the similarities, uh, as far as what I've heard between, uh, between Jaws and our shoot is, you know, getting that thing in the water and, and pushing it around through the water and, uh, and, uh, um, you know, trying to make it look uh, uh, lifelike and uh, animated to its full potential uh, in the water was super tough. So, so tough. In fact, we ended up moving him to dry land uh the uh moving the uh, the animatronic shark to dry to dry land and shooting a lot of it on green screen but um yeah there's plenty of uh plenty of digital effects uh involved in um in uh you know in in uh in kind of finalizing the look of the shark but we did a lot lot practically on set lot 
this is this is you know it's cool about the blend of the you getting to see the blend of the two because you're getting to see the the you know the practical effect side of it which is so endearing to horror movies or thrillers or anything you know in that vein but then also getting to uh, digitize a practical piece still i think lends itself to making it feel more real like it's not like a when you watch the movie it doesn't come off as like a, a shark nato like over the top digital you know what i'm saying so even like you're saying you shot it on the green screen the shark itself still maintains like it looks like a real shark which is cool yeah and that's the beauty of uh gelling practical effects and uh and vfx and i think that's probably the best way to approach most uh, uh visual effects scenarios is to have as much practical elements as possible so when you give them the front and the business end of the uh of the shark uh, visual effects is able to kind of add the back half on to to make it feel a little more realistic and uh and the front end can kind of interact with the actors and uh yeah when when, when you're when you're able to gel those two together i think that's probably the best approach the film um stars like i said in the introduction alicia silverstone who horror movie fans um all the way back uh, to when i was in yeah junior high ish and uh then of course you know pop culture you know she she comes out and she's bad girl and then clueless and you know all it's a hell of a career for her yeah what was what was it like to have her as the the leading lady in this thing and working on you know with the water that whole element on top of it where it's not like you're this is a oh she's coming in and we're shooting at a restaurant and it's a romantic comedy this thing is an intense uh what's being asked of her anybody but when you know she's at a topper tier as far as to work with and she's jumping in you know almost like jamie lee coming back for halloween kills like she's in the shit immediately mm -hmm. as she's in the water for like all day for these scenes so what was like that what was all that like yeah, that was kind of a bizarre thing for me because I too grew up on uh, on those uh, on those movies, and you know I like to talk about the time before I understood that films were made by people and that you can actually have a career doing this type of thing. I had no clue, you know. So like Clueless and you know those movies uh, during those times, I, I you know definitely felt that it was uh, it was surreal to to get a chance to to work with Alicia and you know. Uh, everything I heard uh, up until I met her led to me to believe that she's a fantastic person. And, and that's exactly how it was. She's absolutely fantastic to work with. Uh, so sweet, in fact. And if you follow uh, Alicia on, on social media, you, you probably realize that she's very much a dog lover. Um, she. <laughs> I've got a little uh, a little pit bull myself, and uh, because I travel in my RV, I, I you know bring my house with me whenever I go to sets, and uh, so uh, my dog is obviously there as well. And and Alicia was so sweet; she she had a uh, she had my dog uh, into into her trailer uh, so she could hang out with her uh, in between scenes, and you know while we're setting up and all that. And she'd surprise me with her uh, by bringing her to set. Um, so that was really sweet and fun. And um, as far as the shooting is concerned, really both both to Alicia and uh, and James, both uh, they they were the only two on set that weren't allowed to wear uh, 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 wetsuits while we were shooting. And uh, oh. you know, yes, we were in Orlando, Florida, and you'd like to think that it's all beautiful and warm and and uh, and feeling great all the time. Uh, but it was very cold in December, and uh, December of uh, 2020, in fact. And, uh, you know, uh, the rest of us had the luxury of kind of being able to have wetsuits on, especially and obviously when we were in the uh, exterior pool, which is where we shot most of our our water sequences. Um, you know, uh, Alicia and James both kind of had to be in the water with, you know, the wardrobe they had was didn't allow for much in terms of uh, keeping them warm. So, you know, we, we did our best with keeping the pool warm, the keeping the water warm. But at the end of the day, there's only so much you can do and you're outdoors and it's cold. So, uh, so, you know, good for them for, for, uh, for being as great as they were and dealing with that kind of a deal. The IMBD on it, a little trivia effect. It says that you guys shot this thing at universal Orlando. Is that true? Yeah, we shot in Orlando. Uh, we shot, uh, we used, um, uh, Cabana Bay's, uh, wave pool and a couple of other pool locations, wow. uh, 
the water. So yeah, specifically some of the water sequences that has Alicia uh, uh, happening upon this uh, sandbar. So we use the kind of natural uh, wave effects from that pool area, as well as, of course, uh, plenty of digital set extensions, uh, you know, to clear out and and put her in the middle of the of the sea so um uh that was that was a pretty fun experience so yeah we utilized uh their space and um we also utilized full sales uh, uh stage space where we shot mm -hmm. all of the villa interiors including the storm the main storm sequence um as well as some stuff that leads up to that uh, and the, yeah, the rest of it uh, was shot at a um, uh, it was a park. Uh, they had their 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 private pool, I guess, was uh, was shut down at the time, and uh, so we were able to kind of use that um, and uh, for for the uh, for the water sequence stuff. But uh, yeah, 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 Orlando was good to us. <laughs> right on. Yeah, you know, the uh, you touched on it there when for a minute, but. You know, Matt lives in his RV and he travels from film set to film set. And I mean, you're totally, you're totally the, uh, the complete opposite of the whole work remotely that we've dealt with over the course <laughs> of the pandemic. Um, the, uh, or the antithesis of it, either way you want to look at it, I guess. The, we'll the, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but how did a the decision first? Well, let's get to film first. What what was it that how you found your way to becoming a, a cinematographer? Childhood passion or something that you kind of found along the way? What how did you get started with it? Yeah, I, I ended up kind of finding it along the way. So um, so growing up, I was a kid first, and then I played hockey for nineteen years of my life. Uh, in the in the middle of kind of the tail end of that era, um, uh, going into college, I, I found a, a group of my closest friends to this day that that I played music with for for a while, and uh, and it turned and they told me in the sweetest way that I probably wasn't the best drummer, and so I got replaced in our band with uh, with our other buddy who was a way better drummer than I am, which uh, which in res retrospect uh, makes total sense uh, now, obviously, but. Uh, so I, you know, not wanting to kind of leave them behind or, or do anything much different, I decided to to uh, to pick up the camera and started figuring out how to use um, a digital camera, uh, you know, with the to the effort of uh, of wanting to take live band photos and you know potentially do like some promo photos. I didn't really know what to do at the time, but uh, but that just kind of how it started and. In college, I uh, really couldn't find anything I enjoyed. Uh, then I finally, because of the photography thing, I was like, well, let me give the art program a chance. And uh, so I went and ended up graduating with a BFA in photography. And uh, the type of work I was doing at in college was very kind of highbrow, cinematic, uh, you know, tableau style uh, sets that I was building and, and you know, uh, uh, putting together color palettes of wardrobe and, and using different colored lightings and different lighting techniques and different different editorial techniques and it just made sense to move into uh into motion picture and so whenever whenever i finished uh up when i finished up with college uh i almost immediately went to uh you know i started applying to as a production assistant to various reality tv shows or whatever it was anything that sounded like uh it, it was a big deal i you know i signed up to do and so a lot of top chef a lot of um uh, uh American Idol, uh, Fight Master was a Bellator uh, fight uh, fight show that I worked on, and anyway, from there uh, met my uh, uh, met my friend and, and producer uh, Sam Clater, and we uh, together made a couple of music videos, and and eventually found our way um, uh, and uh, to working with Misty Tally on our first shark movie uh, for Sci Fi called Zombie Shark, yeah. and so we that in 2014, and uh, now it's uh, what 2022, and about 35, 35 to 40 movies, I think, done, something like that. And uh, five, lucky enough, uh, five of them are, uh, are are shark movies. So, um, yeah, it, that holds a, a healthy portion of, uh, of, uh, of the genres I've shot, I guess. The Sci-Fi Channel loves them some shark movies. But it's, that, never just, it's never just a shark movie. It's always like shark something, like shark hyphen something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can count on sci-fi. It's about springtime right now. Whenever Discovery does Shark Week, sci-fi's got some shark stuff up their sleeve for sure. Absolutely, yeah. The beauty of uh, the beauty of Santa Jaws, which was the last one we did <laughs> sci-fi, is that it's a it's a crossover hit. So we, yeah. it aired 
Christmas time as well as uh, Shark Week. So, uh, so that one, that one was a lot of fun to do. Yeah. The fun thing about it too is that, like sci-fi, I always say this on the show is like the amount of subgenres that horror in itself kind of opens itself up to uh, is pretty extensive, and it like it's not too many people who could say, man, that you, my God, may be the only one on the planet who can say that you have done not only shark horror movies, but you have done opposite ended shark horror movies from Santa Jaws to this. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know if you could like do like you cover the gamut of like the emotional uh, response of the audience in, in that sentence right there. Like that's, that's pretty dope. Yeah. To be able yeah, to say. my uh, some of my 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 friends who are who are, who are the uh, you know, or who are the 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 best at what they do, um, in terms of uh, their 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 technicians, a couple of my operator friends who have worked on those films with me to this day say that that's you know those were some of the funnest that we've ever done, and I have to agree. There's just so many practical effects that you're able to use, and you know we had we had our, our company CF, uh, not our company, our friend's company CFX out of Baton Rouge. They made us a submersible machine, uh, basically a submarine that, that has a, 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 pl a plank on top that you can put essentially anything you want to, and, and you can drive whatever it is or fly it, I guess, through the, through the water. And of course we put a, you know, big shark fin on top of it. And for Santa Jaws, we put a little Santa hat on it. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and so that thing, that thing was really cool, man. Cause it can, it, you know, it can submerge fully underwater and then breach the water. And every time that thing kind of slides through the background, it kind of gives me chills. Uh, and to tell you how great that machine was, uh, we did a, I think it was for Santa Jaws, actually. We did a premiere at Bayou St. John in New Orleans. And in the bayou, we decided, well, why not, might as well bring the shark fin and show show it off to some people. And uh, a couple of times we had the cops come out and uh, kind of check it out because people are calling in saying there's sharks in the bayou. So, <laughs> I'm you know, it wasn't much of a ruckus, but we caused a little bit of a ruckus, which I think is fun. <laughs> That's always one of those things, like, Whenever you get like a phone call, like we shot a horror short in a vacant house that a friend let us use. And about 1 30 at night, he called me up as we were packing up and he's like, Is everything okay? And I was like, Yeah, if like everything was great, blah, blah, blah. He's like, Okay, I'm just letting you know the neighbor called and uh, she was making sure that they didn't need to like call the police or anything. And I'm like, Oh, yeah, yeah, like we're, we're fine. But um, but so with that you went yeah. from doing music videos and everything um from going from drummer to doing music videos music production type work video uh, videography to cinematography filmmaking like that whole transition and then now like the lifestyle transition of just being mobile all the time like what kind of led you down as far as shaping both that lifestyle into a career style as well well i honestly just kind of made sense you know because I, I had an apartment uh, in new orleans and i found that i was traveling more often than not and I, you know i was being put up in hotels as as they tend to do whenever you shoot outside of your your living area and um you know i just i whatever apartment i wasn't in love with it I, I didn't own it or anything like that so i i just kind of started thinking of, i've had a couple of friends who have done the rv life thing and i was starting to do just a little bit of like my research you know research on my own just to kind of see if oh maybe you know i wonder if this could be a thing and so yeah i just remember one day thinking like okay like i'm gonna think about it every, every morning i wake up for a month i'm gonna say like okay if i'm waking up in an rv somewhere else right now like would that be cool and of course, every single morning, it was like, yeah, I 100% wish I could, you know, do that right now. And so, yeah, I just started, uh, I started doing more, uh, like, ownership research and trying to figure out, like, what the cost of living is, like, what are the, what are the obstacles and, you know, what, what have other people gone through when they try to travel and, and do that sort of thing. And uh, it just, it all seemed plausible. And, uh, 
And I, and, you know, pretty much it's, it's, you know, it's basically like being in a, in an apartment on wheels. You know, I just, mm-hmm. at the end of the show, I get to either go wherever I want to go, or I get to go visit family, or I get to go, uh, or I get to go to the next movie, um, mm-hmm. whatever, whatever happens to be going on at the time. And I, that's, I, that's, that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted to be mobile for at least a while. And I think doing this will help me kind of figure out where I ultimately want to, you know, call home base or whatever. So, um, sure. yeah, it's very, it's, 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 it's fun. Yeah. It, and I mean, as far as like lifestyle change, nothing really changed, uh, aside from being able to move around whenever I want to, uh, all the parts and pieces and the, you know, the inconveniences and, and the conveniences and, you know, it's all, it's all the same. I just, I just move more often. <laughs> <laughs> I can move my whole house in two hours, uh, where everyone else takes days to pack up and go. <laughs> now, how many how long have you been doing the RV thing as far as going from job to job? How many films would you say that you've been able to just pack up and go? Uh, my very first film was the first month I was in the RV. Uh, wow. I, I, oh, yeah. I got the RV. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very first month. I moved into it uh, in January, and I think I was prepping January 15th or something like that for, wow. for a movie that was January. So, uh, yeah, so that was my, that was my first time being, uh, kind of in it. Uh, first time dealing with, you know, showing up to an RV, uh, uh, uh land, a plot, uh, mm-hmm. a park. Um, uh, and, uh, first time, you know, yeah. Hooking everything up. And once everything was done and settled, I'm like, okay, I'm here now. Like I'm where my job is. That's easy. Yeah. Easy enough. Cool. <laughs> you know, what can go wrong? <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, I think um, yes. Yeah, so, so January of 2020, um, I did a I did a, a film, and then I moved my house to do. Uh, I directed a commercial series, and then I moved it again and did a, a three a three movie project where we we did everything on the same uh, property. So I stayed there for a couple of months to do those. After that was the was the Requin. Um, my plan was to go to Utah and just get a little bit of time to myself, and you know, because it was in the height of COVID, so I wanted to oh, uh, do best to like. And it felt right to be able to travel like this. There, you're not. You know, there's nothing more quarantined than been traveling in, in your own house. Uh, but uh, you know, it was. I ended up not doing that uh, just for the sake of the unknown or whatever. But um, anyway, but luckily enough, the the Requin popped up in uh, December of 2020, I believe, or maybe late November, whatever it was. Uh, I was in Orlando, ready to shoot for uh, for that. And then, um, yeah, yeah, the same thing, same story continues. You know, uh, next next film, I was wherever that was, and the film after that, I was wherever that was, and now I'm back in the in the New Orleans area. I've got uh, two two projects in this area that I'm going to be attacking, and uh, then after that, who knows? We'll see. Man, the New Orleans, my wife and I, we are going out there next year, and it's been one of those spots that you know, knock on wood, things continue to. to trend upwards as far as being able to like travel and everything but it's Mm -hmm. one of those spots out there that just i have wanted to go for so long just because every travel channel special every you know scary movie that takes place in louisiana is just so perfect Mm -hmm. like yeah like you top all the history in itself and you could like take two completely different uh, vacations just like louisiana historical stuff on its own and then mm-hmm. the like underside of uh you know the ghost stories and the plantations and the voodoo and the different practices yeah like, yeah i'm i'm super jealous that you get to make some movies out there that yeah. you having lived out there though like i'm I'm stoked, man. What what kind of a or can you give us a little bit of a preview as to what those films are are about? Uh, I probably shouldn't say anything about those because they're going to be pretty. Uh, I think they'll be pretty sought after. But uh, the um, but yeah, I mean, you know, to kind of riff off of the New Orleans, yeah, New Orleans is great. I highly recommend visiting, uh, especially uh, obviously if you're into the horror side of things. And uh, a really great thing about New Orleans is uh, you can kind of take the uh, similar tours with different tour guides, and everyone kind of has their own flair on backgrounds and stories. And, and so you can really get a lot out of doing, you know, multiple tours with multiple people. And then, uh, you know, of course it's just the architecture is great. The food is great. And the people are, you know, awesome. And just be, be prepared to, uh, to not sleep for a couple of days if you really want to get the, <laughs> because 
yeah, you, you haven't got the full effect until you end up on some stranger's porch talking until 5 a.m. You know, <laughs> everyone everyone a little tipsy, I'm sure. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a great it's a great place to live. Yeah, yeah. I wish I could say more about the upcoming films, but I think it's too close, uh, too close I for got, that. But I got next you. time. Yeah, for sure. The, yeah, uh, yeah. So back to the requin a little bit. You're using you know, the camera cameras and the rigs and stuff that you're using to film this thing in the water like how like where would you say filmmaking is at in in that regard because that's something that gets better and better it seems like every movie that comes out like where do you where do you think that the filmmaking as far as making like a full-length feature that is in this subject matter um is that as far as the production like how difficult was this and like i guess if you could give your best guess like fast forward like another five years from now like where do you think it's going to be as far as filming this kind of a movie we'll be at then yeah i mean I, I, right now our capabilities are so high it's, it's ridiculous what you can do uh with technology uh to assist this kind of a film uh to you know to maybe give the filmmakers a little more wiggle room uh to to make decisions and to get creative um the you know our approach for for the requin was much more in the world of like an indie a small indie film uh you know we didn't have a lot of resources didn't have a lot of uh of money to work with and uh and but you know obviously we all wanted to to make it uh the the biggest baddest coolest thing um that we could make and uh so in in the in our sense you know we use a lot of old technology just classic uh, as far as camera is concerned you know classic splash bags and uh and we had a special underwater camera rig with with a uh, with an underwater operator uh, that we can go in under and do you know several takes at once with uh, with the underwater camera. Um, uh, yeah, and there was a lot of uh, great opportunities to just play with like editorial tricks as well. You know, there's a lot of uh, the underwater camera comes to the surface, and then I use a splash bag for the for the second for the main camera to start at the surface and then continue the shot up. So little like editorial uh, cuts that they're in the right spots make things feel a little more continuous uh, than they might uh, than they might have been on, on set practically. Um, you know, I, but but you know, right now if if you want to do the types of sequences that we shot for this film and you want to be on a, on a dry set with a hydraulic, you know, thing moving around as if it's in the, in the water and you've got all your, you know, lightning flashes going off and you've got a light, you know, you've got a led back background uh, screen. Um, you know, you can certainly go that direction as well. And you can do that right now. Um, but the, the, I think the great news about, about the way we shot the Requin is just like that, that, that smaller sandbox that you're put into just really kind of dri drives a creative mind because we have to, we have to work around so many, uh, just, you know, issues and so many last second things would come up and wind because of, because it's weather, you have weather outside, it turns out. <laughs> and, uh, so it's just things you got to deal with on the day, uh, that really kind of help shape the the creative and um you know a lot of those things seem like problems but to me they're just opportunities to uh to um you know almost almost let some something else make decisions for you in a sense you know because so when you have all the technology in the world at your fingertips it can sometimes dumb down your creativity because you almost have too many options you know it's like a restaurant with a big things on it i can't decide what i want i'd much rather go somewhere that has three things on it um but uh the yeah so um so yeah, yeah, you know, we had to make a lot of like strong creative uh, uh, choices, and I think uh, I think it shows in the final film because because you can kind of see the artistry behind it for sure. Yeah, yeah. Right on, man. The uh, the fact that you guys, like I said at the top of the interview, blend the two, the practical with the digital, is it's almost like a modern take, but you're paying homage to the horror genre, of course, using practical effects. I thought that the uh, mm -hmm. the performance by your cast is awesome. The the direction obviously uh, was on point to get that react that performance out of the cast, and uh, you yourself shot a hell of a horror movie, and the crew, yeah, you, know, um, you know, it all came together freaking perfectly. I thought it was a great a great shark, you know shark attack shark psychological uh film i hope that uh yeah. maybe at some point uh if it's not uh alicia coming back uh 
without giving too many spoilers away at some point, maybe somebody else finds themselves in the same predicament and we get to uh, see this group tell another uh, ver- another uh, continuation of the Wequen and we get to see some more sharks on Matt's resume. So I certainly hope so. Yeah, they're they're fun to make, man. There's a lot of fun to make. And the uh, any like easy way other than like IMBD that people can keep tabs on you, like so when more information about those films you're doing in uh, New Orleans comes about, like where we can like find, see, keep track of you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, following me on Instagram is probably the best way. I do a lot of, uh, uh, you know, I keep up with things there. Uh, it's Matt S. Bell film or just look up Matt S. Bell in, in Instagram and it should pop up. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I post a lot there. I post my lighting diagrams there. Uh, I oh, have nice. uh, one up for the Requin right now. I plan on doing a couple of more from this film and, of course, uh, more from, from films to come. Um and uh, yeah, I post about uh, 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 the classes I teach. I do a lot of uh, film education work, so I love I love teaching. Love love teaching. In fact, I had a I had a uh, a virtual seminar uh, on cinematography last night that went really well. Um, so the uh, so yeah, so I post about that kind of thing all the time. So if you're interested in learning from me, hey, you know the the opportunity might come up sooner or later. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. The and I'll mention my website, uh, mattsbell.com. Uh, is my website if you want to see more film more work yeah yeah no that's that's great that was the thing that i loved about going to film school is the teachers i went you you mentioned full sale i went to la film which is like the sister school to to uh, full sale on the east coast and yeah. part of the part of the thing that is so rad about that experience was getting to take classes from people who are making films. And it was like yeah. the, beginning, the beginning of each, you know, start of each new class. It was like, this is who I am. This is what I've worked on. And it was instantaneously became like another level of like my day job. I work at high school. So it's very much like shut up and listen. And today's day and age, all the kids <laughs> look at you and they're like, well, until I get to know you, no, like why? <laughs> and uh, to be able to, to learn um, from people who have worked on films and have, you know, the clout to say like, what I'm saying is actually important to your knowledge and growth, I thought was one of the most valuable takeaways from going to film school. So that's rad that you're doing, you know, seminars and yeah. stuff to be able to share your experience from people who are wanting to do it. So that's, exactly. that's really cool. Yeah. I think it's the best way because we are currently working in the system and, you know, and in the industry and uh, the industry changes every couple of, every couple of months, it seems. And uh, so to, to learn from people who are currently actually making movies, uh, you know, you're getting the most up to date. Uh, yeah. The up to date point of view uh, on it. Uh, so yeah, I, that's my personal way. I love to, uh, to learn. And, um, and uh, obviously I love to teach that way as well. So everybody who is listening or watching, make sure we will post it in the show notes. But check Matt, uh, the new film out. But check out Matt's website and check him out on Instagram and stay up to date on not only his films, but if you're looking to learn, a cool uh, learning opportunity. But, man, we will definitely have to get you back on uh, later on, uh, definitely after uh, Louisiana is in your uh, review mirror at least uh, filmmaking wise maybe you'll still be out there who knows where the uh, the traveling yeah. cinematographer is going to go to next that's so dope like what a what a way to go like and you got your dog like someone needs to make a movie about you cuz that is a uh, that's a hell of a that's a hell of a journey <laughs> man uh, <laughs> uh, hey i'm 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 down for anything so if somebody wants to set that up, please contact me. <laughs> <laughs> but man, man, thank you for taking the time yeah. and we will uh, definitely get you back on. Yeah, absolutely. It was a pleasure. I had a great time. And uh... All right. Well, there you go, man. That is this week's horrific podcast. We'll be back next week with something. Not entirely sure yet. Got a few different things 
that could possibly be the meat and potatoes of our horrific podcast next week. But until then, thank you for listening. Please, if you are listening to this, take a minute, man. Just give give it a like, subscribe to us, even comment would be the uh, it would mean a lot because we are in a position where we are rising. I see the numbers that we are getting across the globe and it is very encouraging but it also would help us out a lot if you guys could just take a moment to uh, comment or like or subscribe and uh, you know that that really does make a huge difference even though I know before I started this show I didn't think it did but it does so if you can in your uh, schedule or day or whatever do that on the app or desktop whatever way you are listening to my voice right now it would be appreciated but again stay tuned this week we got a bunch of stuff we got writing with horrific we got evolution of hhn la we've got probably a tribute show if not a uh, screening room and yeah stay spooky everybody